Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over drafting for a bit and how different factors can affect pick and ban in League of Legends. I initially wrote this to segue into how drafting evolved over the best of five between G2 Esports and Fnatic, but given that that was three patches ago on 9.16, I reckon that part isn't super relevant anymore. Anyways, let's get into it. Firstly, there are picks that are widely considered the strongest across the board and are heavily prioritized as a result. On patch 9.15, for example, Yumi, Aatrox, Akali, and Silas were present in more than 80% of matches played globally for major regions. To give a more recent example, as of the day I'm recording this, which is before groups and after the playing stage concluded, Pantheon was sitting at 100% presence, with Zaya, Syndra, and Kiana being picked or banned in over 88% of matches. In many cases, there is a consensus on which champions are considered the strongest in a given patch, which leads to their overwhelming presence. However, there are regional differences. Certain picks end up being more highly prioritized in one region over others. Picks that, for one reason or another, are just not valued as highly. A good example of this was Karthus Jungle in spring of 2019. The pick was very popular in the LEC, as it had a 67% pick or ban presence throughout the split. Meanwhile, in North America, priority on the champion was much lower, as it was only picked or banned in one-fifth of the games. In the eastern regions, the champion failed to make an impact, as it was left open in a large majority of matches. As we go deeper into this year's World Championship, it's possible that we'll have a regional clash with different regions having different priorities, especially as Europe and North America bootcamped in Europe, and the Korean and Chinese teams are just arriving before their group stage matches. In the LPL Summer Split, for example, Olaf was the highest presence champion at 89% pick or ban, whereas he's much lower in other major regions. EU puts a much higher value on Rakan than other regions, and that may be because the players feel like they can pick and blind and survive counter matchups. Then, if we dive deeper into specific teams or specific matchups between teams, we'll run into other factors that affect pick and ban. There are pocket picks, for example, that can be specific to a certain player or team. How much they show up will depend on the strength of the champion and the proficiency of the player with the pick. Picks like Nemesis's Twisted Fate, Huni's Rumble, or Nogori's Vlad are good examples of pocket picks. Clutch will typically pick up Rumble and blind pick whenever it's open. That's how confident both Huni and his team are when playing with the pick. Even if there are theoretically better options available in a given patch, comfort for the player and for his team matter a lot. Pocket picks can also coincide with meta picks. Uh, Aatrox was a high priority champion in summer, boasting over 80% of presence in all matches. In Fnatic games, his presence shot up to 94.4%. Most teams simply banned it against Pwipo, while others left it open to first pick and take away one of his comfort picks. Then there are flex picks, picks that can be played across multiple positions. These might be popular picks like Silas or Akali that are flexed by a lot of teams, or team-specific picks that they can flex. Current flexes you will likely see on 9.19 include Kiana, Renekton, Pantheon, Syndra, and Tristana. And then you have team-specific flexes. Certain teams like G2, for example, will flex Yasuo between mid and bot, and Gragas between jungle and support, as they can play the gragas Yasuo combo in different roles, which leads to teams putting more focus on banning out Yasuo against G2, for example. Flex picks are valuable because they represent strong picks, in the context of a team or just in general, that don't give much info to their opponent. Picking a flex pick early will leave opponents guessing and limit counter pick options until it is certain where that champion is going. Then you have to consider shared champion pools. If a team shares a champion pick with an opponent, there might also be a higher priority in picking it as it guarantees a pick that a team is comfortable with while also being a takeaway from their opponents. And finally, it's important to consider recent performances as they can affect the priority of a pick and lead the other team to ban it. To give an example of these two last factors, take the Pike first pick from G2's finals against Fnatic. Both teams share the pick as both Mickey and Hillisank play it. Not only that, but during the split, they beat each other with Pike. In addition, Hillisank had two strong performances on Pike the day before against Shaka. Between the recent performances to the fact that it's a shared champion, led G2 to put increased stock on the pick and go for what would be considered a very unusual first pick on 9.16. Finally, I just briefly wanted to mention pick priority in terms of role, and by that I mean how often you'll see a team value blind picking or counter picking for one role. Some teams are more consistent with these things, whereas others adapt according to their opposition, or change it up depending on which champions are open. Clutch Gaming is a team that will usually counter pick for their top laner, and this is especially true on red side where they get last pick. There are instances where Huni will blind pick, but it's tied to one of his pocket picks in Rumble, and occasionally Gangplank. To give another example, in week 1 of Worlds, RNG put very high stock on first picking AD if Zaya was open. 
I could ramble on and on and give more examples, but I'm sure you get the idea. In any case, I hope this helped you understand a bit more about pick ban and how different factors can lead to very different priorities in picks and champion select. See you next time.